Nah. Say, well, Greg, I'm too old to change. No, you aren't. My father, Oscar Laurie, adopted me. That's where I got my name, Oscar. No, Laurie. And um, my mom, she was a beautiful woman. You saw a little video in the beginning uh, that showed a picture of her. She was sort of a Marilyn Monroe look-alike. And she got married and divorced seven times. And I went with her through all of that. And she was an alcoholic and lived a pretty sad life. She married these kind of low-life guys that she met in bars. But then one day she met a man from New Jersey named Oscar Laurie. He was unlike any of the men she had ever married before. Instead of having his shirt unbuttoned, a few too many buttons, he was more buttoned up, a little more preppy East Coast. He was a hardworking attorney, uh, a good man, an honest man, a moral man. The only man that my mom ever married that treated me as a father ought to treat a son. He loved me. Uh, he tried to teach me things. And he adopted me and gave me his name. And I always loved him. But one day, I was coming out of school. I used to live in New Jersey, by the way. I am a Jersey boy. How you doing? <laughs> I know I'm born in California. Don't hold that against me. But uh, I lived in New Jersey and we were living in Summit, New Jersey. Coming out of my classroom in school one day, my mom had the Cadillac all loaded up with our luggage. I said, what's going on? She said, we're leaving. I said, where are we going? She said, Hawaii. I was excited. I'd never been to Hawaii at that point. I think it was around nine years old. I said, where's dad? She said, he's not coming. She divorced him. I didn't see him again. Now, fast forward uh, probably 18 years. I've become a Christian at this point. I've started a church even, and I've been asked to go and preach the gospel in Central Park at an outreach that was being held. And so I just decided to try to look up Oscar Laurie. I didn't even know if he was alive still. So I, I had a friend that worked for the Bar Association check, check, and sure enough, Oscar Laurie was practicing law in Red Bank, New Jersey. So I called up his office. I said, hello, is Oscar Laurie there? And his secretary said, he's out to lunch right now. Can I ask who's calling? I said, Greg Laurie. She said, how do you spell your last name? I said, the same way he spells his. It's his son. He quickly called me back, Greg, how are you? I said, well, Oscar. And next thing I knew, I said, Dad, I'm good. And I'm going to be in New York. And I'd like to have lunch with you. He said, oh, no, come to our home. Spend the weekend with us. Uh, you know, I want to get reacquainted with you. And I, oh, I don't want to impose because he had remarried at this point and had a family. He says, no, come be with us. And I said, okay. So we did our speaking engagement and we got on the train and pulled into the station there at Red Bank, New Jersey. Me, my wife, Kathy, our son, Christopher. I saw my dad standing there and he looked just like he did when I was a little boy. And I just was so touched that I was able to see him again. And so we spent the night talking. And my dad was 65 at this point, and he had had a heart attack and almost had died, blacked out at the wheel of his car. And we caught up, and one night, the night afterwards, uh, his wife said, Greg, tell us how you came to believe in Jesus. And I shared my whole story. And she was listening. My dad was just sitting at the other end of the table with his hands up to his face like this, looking at me. I'm thinking, he doesn't like what I'm saying. I feel like I'm in a court of law, he's the judge, and I'm going down in flames right now. He listened very carefully, very intelligent man. The next morning, or he said to me that night, Greg, you wanna walk with me tomorrow morning? Because he had to walk very early every morning for his heart, and so I agreed. And, he knocked on the door of the room I was staying in and I came out at six o'clock New Jersey time, three o'clock California time and we get into the chilled winter air and we're walking along and my dad said I was listening very carefully to what you said last night, Greg, about Jesus Christ. I said, yeah, he said, I want to give my life to Jesus Christ right now.
I wasn't sure if he understood what I'd said to him and said, well, Dad, let me go over it again, what it means to be a Christian. I told him again what it meant to give your life to Jesus and believe. And he said, I want to do that right now. And I said, well, Dad, what you need to do is pray. At this point, we're walking through a park. He stops and drops to his knees in the middle of the park. I wasn't going to get on my knees. But since he was down there, I got down there with him. Put my hand on his shoulder. I led him in a prayer. And after we were done praying, he said, Greg, Jesus Christ just came into my life and he's changed me. And God did change his life and gave him 15 more years. He got involved in a great church, served the Lord, and died and went to heaven. And I'll see him again. He was 65 when he came to Christ and uh, 80 when he died. So you say, well, Greg, that, okay, so I guess an old guy can change. But I'm young. I'm young and I don't need to hear this tonight. Well, there's a new chapter in my story that I would have never written. But on July 24th this year, my son Christopher died. And uh, it was the hardest moment of my life. He was killed in an automobile accident. And we were devastated. And we weep about it every single day. He was a wonderful boy. All of the art you see in this stage, he designed it. He did all of this. He loved the Lord, and he had a beautiful daughter, still has a beautiful daughter named Stella. She's here tonight. My granddaughter, his wife Brittany is here tonight. His brother Jonathan, my wife Kathy. His wife Brittany served here last night on the floor counseling new believers. It's a tragedy, I'll be honest with you. I won't put a happy face on it, but you know what? I know that my son is in heaven with my father who believed in Jesus. And that's my hope. He's with my father, Oscar, and he's with my father in heaven. And that is the message I bring to you tonight. I don't say if you become a Christian, you'll never have a problem in life. You'll never have pain. I've had a lot of pain. But I'm saying this to you tonight, you'll never be alone. And God will be with you through everything.